I turn the camera on, you come running. Well, then tell everybody, hi, everybody. It's a beautiful day in Southern California, and I'd say this is Robbie, but this is Giddy. I am on my deck, and it is a gorgeous day. The roosters are crowing. The sun is out. It's not too hot. Let's see what the temperature is. It's early in the morning. The sun has been up for a little bit. Oh, it's almost 80. Beautiful day. I figured I would take you around on the deck because I still don't know what I'm going to do with the deck. And just kind of walk around and talk about what I'm doing and my madness on the deck. You know, you know I turn on the camera, so that must mean broccoli. We'll get to it in a minute. Okay, hold off. Let's take a zip around the deck and I'll tell you what I'm doing. And I hope to give you all ideas because every day you live and learn. And I learned something the other day that I had no idea about. And it's just amazing how you can learn so much from observing nature. Yes, the last time I said I was getting rid of those. I am, I am. They should be gone within a week or so. This is tomatillos growing, and I'm sending some to my daughter. Look at this. They just come up just like that. I leave them in there. They sit until the time is right. But what happens is the strongest does survive. And it's already got flowers. So I'm pulling some of them out, and I am moving them around. And Gary suddenly loves tomatillos even more than before which he loved before. So he's been planting some in his garden, so I am moving them around. Here is a hybrid zucchini. Still have those two I've got to pull off. There's another one still hiding back there, but that is really long, ready to come off. So I will be getting that off today. Oh, I forgot about that. My pomegranate tree, I'm coming, I'm coming. The pomegranate tree, I need to move that. I haven't done anything, and it's all growing on its own. And that's what's so wonderful about a vegetable garden. And this is all a vegetable garden. The only flowers is this one, and it's edible for making tea. Look at that, Roselle Red. Isn't that gorgeous in a small pot? But as you can see, the roots have gone into the tote. And it is just so full of beautiful flower buds and it's been flowering and flowering. It is gorgeous. We'll get back to this tote in a minute. So I've still got everything going the same and I've got all these baby dinosaur kales because the I had a cutting from the yard there and it threw seeds here and I'm moving these. I'm going to save all these dinosaur kales. I want them. The Swiss chard is not important to me because it grows like weeds here and I'll plant them where I want when I get into that. I will be getting into that soon. Celery coming up, more Swiss chard, more mint, mint, mint. There's thyme under one of these. Oh, it's under here. It's struggling, but I do have thyme there. And then I've got Malabar spinach is starting to take off. It loves the warm nights. We've been in the 70s at night. So that's what a lot of things like. And I'll show you what else likes that too. Walking onions. This is really overpacked, but it has been producing so many babies that I keep picking them. And that's gonna be one of the big things that I'm gonna plant more than ever this year because I haven't been going to the grocery store. And with the walking onions, not only do you eat the greens, which are fabulous. I made a cucumber salad yesterday by simply slicing up a cucumber from the garden, chopping in some green onions, a little vinegar, just a slight dash of sugar to bring out the salt I added in and the pepper, and it was phenomenal. And normally I use white onions for that. But on the base of these, they have a small onion. So if I start growing a lot of them, I can start pulling it out and using the small little onion in there and the whole thing. Right now, if I pull it out, if I go over and say, oh, I'm gonna use this and pull it out, that's goodbye onion. Where in the meantime, I've got green onions growing all year. But if I have hundreds of them, it won't be any big deal. I can pull them out. So that's what my plan is. So I'm gonna keep moving those and get a field of them going probably in totes. These are precious to me. This is lettuce. The lettuce that grows here is romaine lettuce. That's the one that just grows like a weed. And what you want is you want stuff that's gonna grow where you don't have to cater to it or do anything. That's the most important thing. Plant things that you don't have to struggle to get to survive. If it wants to grow and you don't have to do that much but trim it and clean it up, maybe move it to different places, then that's the plant you want. So the romaine lettuce is the one. I've tried different lettuces here. 
This one is bolted. I'll let the birds get some of the seed heads. The bees will come in and pollinate that. And then at that point, I'll grab some and that's the other thing I'm gonna do. My big thing this year, coming up and probably forever, will be a lot of walking onions and lettuce. And I figured out the way it's gonna grow best for me. See, this is all green Swiss chard and it's gone to seed. So it grows here also like a weed. I don't even have to do anything with that. This is the asparagus plant. Gary dug them all out. I had thrown a lot of seeds in here and he dug them all out, but he missed one. So this is getting moved into a tote into my garden very soon. And then I'll plant something else in there. That is chocolate mint. This pot is falling apart. It's very, very old. I'll move the chocolate mint, but I want to save that and I don't want to get rid of that. And again, more lettuce seeds. Most of them have been taken by the birds, but what I'll do is I'll pick it and then I'll crumble it on top of a, probably a square container with soil in it and then water it, whatever grows, grows. I'll move it, it moves wonderful if you move it at the right time. Green sorrel, parsley, which the parsley went to seed and I've got to gather up. See, I'll show you some seed. That's parsley seed. How do you collect seed? That's it. What I would do is collect it, put it in, let's say, a plastic container, some sort of container, chuck it, make sure there's no bugs or anything, and then pack it in an envelope. Where am I going to put this? I'll put this here for now, and something will grow. So it, that's how easy it is to collect parsley seed. The same thing with the garlic chives. Look at this gorgeous garlic chive. When it goes to seed and the seeds are black, and don't pick anything until the seeds are ripe on the plant. If you pick it too soon, it won't develop good, and you'll end up with seeds that won't grow. They just won't they haven't matured enough to grow. So you leave them and you pick them just like the parsley when it's time to pick them. You can cover them with tulle. Tulle is my favorite tool in the garden. It really is. Because without tulle, I would have basically, I'm going to almost say next to nothing. Because tulle does so much in the garden. Those are Orioles coming in. They're feeding because I have their food there and they come all day. And that I'll talk about in a second too. They are fabulous. More garlic chives down here. And look at this. Couldn't grow this all year. I know a lot of you in very, very hot places have. But look at that. Do you know what this is? Three days ago, this is how quick they came up. I put some popolo seeds here because none of the popolo that I left here earlier grew. Three days ago I was sprinkling it all over and they came up immediately. Why? Because popolo likes the warm nights of about 70 degrees. They don't even mind the 110 it's been but they love the warm nights and they're coming up all over so I've got to get a lot of that dug out as well because I don't need that much. I don't even like popolo. If you like cilantro you'll love popolo because that's what they use when they don't have cilantro. Like right now, you can't really grow cilantro here because it bolts. You'll grow it, it's hot, it will bolt. But Popolo loves the heat, and this will grow all through into November, sometimes into December, but it gets so tall, it'll just go way, way up in the air. So that's why I don't need that many, and I hope some more will come around on the bottom. I think I sprinkled some seeds around here, but if I didn't, I will. But I can move any of these, and I might spoon some out and get them out and then grow a few of them because that is one of Gary's favorite things. Actually, I should get him to take some seeds to his garden. I don't think he's grown poplo in his garden. I haven't been down to his garden. Not for a week or two. I'll have to go down there, maybe with you. So anyways, that's what's going on here. But this I did freshen up. We took out all, there was apple trees growing all through here. All kinds of apple trees. I told Gary, get them out or I'm gonna compost them. So he grabbed them and he put them somewhere. And then I threw some just soil and stuff from the garden and stuff from here on the deck. Just threw it in there and threw the seeds in there and that's what's growing. I left the lettuce so because it was bolting so I kind of left that over but I dug it all out. When you want to freshen any of your containers or totes or flower pots, you know, your plants are in pots, it's really easy. You don't have to take it all out. You can take half of it out, three quarters out, a quarter out, whatever you feel you want to take out and then freshen it up with new soil and it just rejuvenates the plants that are in there. Dig around them. Even though it looks like you're disturbing the roots, they'll love it. Okay, let's back up here. I'll just go this way. All right, this is my tri-colored sage and it's doing fabulous. That is in one of those containers. And then I've got tomatoes growing everywhere. Oh my gosh. I picked 20 tomatoes yesterday to make like a salsa. Just, we keep making, isn't that funny? I keep making salsa. Didn't make salsa before. I'd bring it all in, chop it all up. And my daughter's telling me, 
oh, that's such a funny story. I don't eat much from the garden. And I said, but you're so healthy now. I don't eat much. Turns out she starts talking, her husband makes a salsa every night. And I always thought salsa meant you had to cook it and can it or jar it. It turns out every night he goes in the garden and his salsa is picking tomatoes and peppers and some greens and onions, white, green, garlic, chives, everything, putting it in a food processor, processing it, with, processing it and then putting it all over all day. He does it in the morning from what I understand. And they use it all day and whatever they're eating for lunch or dinner. And that's what he's calling salsa. And I thought, wow, I start doing it and Gary loves it. I even add in whatever I want, some broccoli leaves or kale, and, and it's so good. I added in zucchini. I added in a cucumber the other day. It is so good. And sometimes if I want a slight different taste to it, what I do some, sometimes now is, let's say with the onions and maybe some peppers from the garden, bell peppers or hot peppers. Hot peppers I leave, leave raw. But I'll cook them slightly, a little bit of butter, on a frying pan and soften them up and it brings out the sugar taste in some of the food. Then I'll mix it in with the raw and it's so good. There's so many different ways. Look at the watermelon. If it wasn't for tool, used in two different ways, especially the first way I used it, I would not have watermelon on this deck. I'm going to put that video out. I've got one more coming out hopefully this week on other ways I use tool. But I had a stinking rat that every night would get in there and just dig up the soil. I don't know what he was doing. Just digging up the soil. I looked. I thought maybe the compost was bad. Maybe it didn't break. No, he just was digging around. Maybe it was cool. I don't know. I got rid of him. Not just with tool, but in a mad method I came up with. And I experimented. I did it for days and it worked. And I will share that this week. Don't want to get into that. Could be too long. I want to just keep this because some of you only want to see the deck. Anyways, that's doing really good. And so I... Well, it's winding all over. So hopefully we'll get more watermelon, but I do have a watermelon here. And well, Kitty wanted broccoli and she took off. Kitty, you want broccoli? Kitty, Kitty. Okay, I don't know where she is now. This plant, another thing, I don't want to get into tool because I'm doing one separate on tool. Something was going up it. It could have been caterpillars, cut, cut worms, I don't know, something from the soil. But by just laying tool around it, it stopped. Yeah, it gets chewed up by the birds that come in. Occasionally I find the caterpillars, you know, from the white cabbage moss on there. And a lot of times the Orioles get it. And that's what's been so amazing. The Orioles. Oh, it's been just wonderful. But the tool has just helped. And then I've got basil growing here, chocolate mint growing here. I've let some of my radishes go to seed now. I'm going to collect the seed. And once it's brown on the plant, I'll take them off. And then I will, you know, take them out of the pods and put them in an envelope and save them for next year and just plant them. And I've got cucumber in here. No, this isn't cucumber. This is Korean melon. I don't think I've got any Korean melons yet. Another melon here that likes the warm weather. And now that it's been warm, it's just been taken off and I've got to figure out how I want this to grow. My eggplant, we'll see. Eh doing okay but not that great so we'll see more tomatoes there's a compost thing so I can compost right in there I can throw something in there and then just water that and it feeds the whole plant and let's see I've got now this is cucumber I've got cucumber growing here and another watermelon started in there more basil purple basil purple basil is beautiful so we've done that some red vein sorrel isn't this gorgeous uh, purslane is coming up again loves the heat and just started taking off I didn't plant it it must have I had some growing there so it must have fallen into that container and I'm debating what I'm going to do there and it started to grow and now it's just taken off in a matter of within the week it's grown I'm still debating if I'm going to set up this chair here because I really think I want to put a different chair here it's different ways of setting up these chairs and I so love my chair garden See the legs on here? These work really good because of the triangle legs and there's a good base to it. They do work really good in the garden on soil. If you get a chair that's got little spindly legs, those don't do as well in the garden unless you put plates or something under them because it's like sticking in a stick. It will work its way into the soil. So I may end up moving that chair off, not setting it up because it was getting very close to setting it up and putting that in the garden and moving a different chair there or something else. 
And let's see what else is going on. You've, okay, so you've seen all that from the back side, tomatoes, tomatoes, parsley, more tool. I lay tool all over because it does deter a lot of rodents. They don't like it. It doesn't bother the birds. The birds will climb all over tool. They can't get under it. So you can cover things if you're protecting, let's say, fruit. You want to wrap fruit in and stuff. But they will walk around on it. They don't get caught. They do get caught in bird wire. We don't want to get into that today. That's another thing. Again, I don't want to get into tool. I've got a separate thing coming up with tool. So all the tomatoes here are doing really good. And my hopes is that they will last all through the fall and into the winter. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. And let me tell you, to this day, it seems like people have forgotten that summer is not our hottest months. It really doesn't start until September and October. We are so hot. Sometimes at the end of August, it starts to get hot. But September, we end up with all the heat waves. I re remember that when I was a kid going to school. They were always arguing, why are they bringing the kids back to school September, letting them out in June, bringing them back September when the hottest months are in September, and we didn't have air. They always said they were going to change it. They never did, I guess because the schools have air now. All right, lettuce. These are lettuce seed heads. So, see, those are perfect and it's all brown. It is ready to come off. I've got to get those off. I've left them for the goldfinches. They do come up on the deck all day and they nibble and fly through here. They've been bringing their young babies. The babies are still with them even now. So I haven't taken them all down because it's really, what, thousands upon thousands of seeds. I've even got some saved. So I figured let them eat and then what I'll do is I'll cut it off, I'll crumble it into something like a container like that, dry, and then sprinkle the seeds in the container. I'll get into lettuce also in another video, but it's so easy to move. See, I moved these recently, and look how beautiful. I'm getting ready to set up. See, there's a tomatillo I'm gonna give to my son-in-law who's gonna love that. Just stuck it in there and we'll drop it off. I've got a way I'm gonna grow lettuce because I figured out the easiest way for me, I know it's gonna work, and I want to have lettuce, a lot of lettuce. This is all gold to me. This is soil. You go through your garden, anything that you don't want, every little leaf, I don't care if it comes off a tomato, I don't care what it comes off of, it all breaks down in the soil and that's what I've been doing, collecting that. Because when I freshen up the pots or when I plant new pots, I put that on the bottom and then whatever soil planting medium I'm going to use on the top, compost, and that will turn into compost underneath as the plants are growing. And you save on soil because a bag of soil was what, $10 now? Going to save so much and it's more beneficial for the plant anyways. It works fantastic. Mint, garlic, chives, oregano. Isn't that gorgeous? Oregano with lettuce growing out of my oregano. Let's see, stevia. Look at this. I've got stevia growing on the deck. It's growing long. Look how long it is. Isn't that amazing? I love it. Oh, look at that. More garlic chives. They're going to throw flowers. So I've got stevia there, and then I've got some dill coming up. I sprinkled some dill seeds, so I've got dill coming up here. And more dill here, and that's a weed. That's sow thistle. You could eat it. And this is some tomatillos I'm starting to move in that. Look at that. Just for fun, when I planted the tomatillos, I put in a couple popolo seeds, and they're even growing in this container I'm going to drop off at my daughter's house. Tomatoes coming up down there, and there's some, I think there's some walking onions down there. I'm trying to collect walking onions and stick them everywhere. More garlic, chives, and parsley. We have had a lot of parsley this year. Now, that's the thing with having birds. I do cater to the birds, and the birds are very important to me in my garden. But uh, there is a trade-off, and so you got to be aware of that. If you, I want to be organic, just because I don't want to spend the money and start spraying, and I don't like the whole idea anyways of toxic stuff on my food. I don't need it. So I want to do more what nature does. But here's the thing. You do bring in the birds. The trade-off is you may end up having less butterflies because the birds do come in and they are eating the caterpillars. We normally have swallowtails all through here this time of the year and the swallowtails do eat all my parsley up. They come for the dill first. They wipe out all my dill. I'll have those beautiful caterpillars, the striped caterpillars, and they'll be full up here. 
And then when they finish that up, they finish all my parsley. Now they're only on the plant for two weeks and the parsley does come back. But during that time when they're here, I don't seem to have any parsley or dill. The Orioles right now have been cleaning all that up. They've been wandering around the deck. So it's not that in the garden too. There's very few caterpillars. They're never going to get them all. So there's still going to be caterpillars, but they do really do a great job of cleaning. So there is always a trade-off on doing things different ways. But you know, this is working for me. I am producing a lot of food. Look, I'm getting ready to work on my projects on my table. And so I'm going to go with the birds because I do want the birds here. We'll just have to work with it. Like I said, they're not going to get all the caterpillars. I found one the other day, a cocoon. I kind of tucked it away so it would do its thing. And we'll just have to work with it that way. Let's see what's going on in here. This is my chair. Can you believe this? Go back and look at the other one. The chair was like nothing. It's not painted the chair. It's got a black tote. And I've got sage down there. The tote waters the sage. I have beautiful sage. Look how big those leaves are. And look at the basil. Look how big the basil is. I got basil, I got a big tomato plant. I've got dill that's getting ready to go to seed. That's dill under here that's throwing the flowers, just starting that beautiful pollen that the hummingbirds are gonna pick off. I've got celery growing back here. Little bit of lettuce, but not much. I moved a little bit of the lettuce because it really got shaded out. But look, let me see if I can show you this. I started, I don't think I can, a cutting of oregano in here. Right in here, isn't that something? So I've got another oregano plant. Put that back in there. It's in one of those little compost containers. So I can open that up or lift the pot. Wow, they ate everything. That's something. I haven't looked. I had all kinds of stuff in here. It's completely gone. So the earthworms went in there, cleaned it out. And now there's nothing in there. I'll get some more stuff in there. So anyways, that's it, celery. And then I did plant peas. See my peas? I've got peas. But... We've been 110 and the peas really took it, took, it, took it hard. So the peas are, I don't know how they're going to do, but I have a few peas on there. That's just the stake from the garden. It's just the twig from a branch. It works really good. I haven't tied it up, just kind of leaned it up, but I've got the yarn going back and forth on the tomato stakes. So I'm going to plant more peas because as our weather does change, and we will be hot all through September, not every single day, but I'll be able to get things going and what makes it makes it red celery look at that isn't that something cool and then more garlic chives more see I've got so much parsley parsley there's more parsley there there's mint there's garlic chives more red celery it hybridized with the green I had I think so now I'm getting a red green celery all over the property and then more parsley through here and this is I realized the other day this is the only I believe it's the only onion chives I've got so I collected the seeds and I've got to get them planted and I did label them I have a habit of collecting seeds putting it on the counter in a little cup thinking I'm going to remember what they are I end up with all these little cups and I end up putting them in an envelope saying surprise because I figured if I took the time to collect them I must have wanted it and I'll figure it out when they grow. Gary always says, what kind of peppers are these? I don't know. It says surprise. It could be anything. And then back here, more walking onions. I just put it in any container I had and it's working. So I'll move those where I want. And the celery and then the carrots. Those are little tiny carrots. I've got to get those out. And even in here, here's a pot and I'm putting baby walking onions I'm finding. So that's basically it. Oh, see, and this is how I also put it with the tote. The tote is watering this, which is watering this great big beautiful tomato plant. And then down here the same thing. I've got the celery growing. And here I don't even know where to put the red vein sorrel. It started to grow. I'll have to figure it out as I go on my project. What's that? Oh my gosh! I didn't see it! Another watermelon! I'm gonna have to get that hung up better and tool. I didn't see that. Kind of a wonky little thing but you know what watermelon's a watermelon i didn't see that that is exciting another watermelon i thought maybe they're done because so many of them i've looked are drying up haven't noticed that many bees this year i don't know why gary says we have a lot of bees but they've been working the pepper trees and they haven't worked to me a lot in the garden oh how cool and then of course this is how i do the lazy way of growing tomatoes I just grab a tomato off the plant and I just throw it in some soil in one of these square containers I've got. And when they grow, I pull them out and I plant them. And look, they come up everywhere. Those are all tomatoes growing in there. All these, 
volunteers. They grow everywhere and then I just move them. And if they want to grow that much here, you know, like that, that easy, I can move them. And I don't care what they are. I like tomatoes whatever way they taste, as long as they taste good. And so far, every single one's tasted really good. And sometimes, if I don't know what I'm going to do with them, I just leave them dry on the plant. Let's see, do I have any here? No. And I just leave them dry out, and then come spring to start throwing the dried out tomatoes around. You can wash the seeds, cut them over, open, wash the seeds, put them on a paper towel, dry them. And once they're completely dry, and do it quick, because you don't want the seeds to start to germinate, then just put them in an envelope and label them. You can do it that way too. There's so many different methods. With me, I collect a lot of the tomatoes and let them sit. That's really lazy. But you know what? It works and I have no shortage of tomatoes here. I'm pretty sure I covered everything. I just wanted you to see how I am collecting leaves. I'll even sit down with the chair sometimes and go over each and every leaf. And every leaf is going to be soil to me and that's so important and I you've got to remember don't throw any of that away because that is just gold for you that's going to be the best soil you can produce and keep it it doesn't matter if you're going to end up with snow soon and you're not growing till spring it's not going to go bad that's nature it sits on the ground until spring so just put it somewhere and tuck it away and come spring you've got the start of your own soil that you can put in your own containers or even in the ground wherever you're going to plant it's just fabulous to do it that way and i have learned so much this week i found out that a simple branch right molly a simple branch she's still looking for things i think there was just the lizard over here and Let's see, is he still, oh yeah, he's still there. Oh, I think he just ran off. We've got a lizard here too. She chases him around, but he's much faster than her. A branch, it's amazing, can be an organic way for you to get rid of pests by bringing in the birds. I, I, when I was sitting out in the garden the other day, it was just a fascinating sight to see. There's so many things if you just sit Enjoy your garden and look around and look how nature takes care of itself. You'll just find out there's so much that you can learn from everything around you. Isn't this gorgeous? I don't even know what kind of tomatoes. None of these tomatoes have labels on them. I did not go to the nursery this year at all. Oh my gosh. He's going to take a bath. Look, look. You got to share this with me. He's taking a drink on the ice cream. Is that cool? Oh, he went and took a drink of water. Now he's drinking his nectar out of the pizza tray that the Oreos drink out of. Look, but he went and took a little drink of water and he splashed a little. Let me fix my camera so you can see. Is that beautiful? I get so excited over this. I'm sorry I'm wasting your time. But I'm just, these guys just flabbergast me. So do the Oreos. The Orioles are just amazing to watch, too. I've learned so much, even more this year than ever, on how they hunt. Okay, let me stop this. He's just going to drink. We're going to go back and look at this. Isn't he going to just drink? I have to keep putting my camera into manual to get it because it wants to focus past it. But I have learned a lot on the Orioles as well. They're, they're in the background. You can see them. See? They want to come in. The hummingbirds are so brave. And they'll come right. Well, of course, they'll feed out of my hand. So now I'm boring you if you're coming in just to watch the deck garden. But that's basically it. You, you learn from the birds. They pollinate the garden and you really want them. They clean up the garden for you. They help you stay organic. They eat insects. They, you know, what else can you want from them? You really want them in the garden. So I cater to them as much as I can. And I'm going to be honest, I'm being selfish. I absolutely love these birds. This is such a joy. With everything going on, there's nothing nicer than just to try to sit down for five, ten minutes and just watch them. And sure, they may entertain me a bit by playing around with all the different water fountains I make and features and bird feeders. But, you know, it's helping them. And some people have said, let them do their own thing. Well, they can't. Because with weed abatement, they clear the hillsides and they don't have the wildflowers they used to have. So they actually depend on our gardens for them to survive. Because unlike a parrot, a parrot can go for days. If they get sick, 
they don't even need any food. They can go for days as long as they have water until you get medication for them if you've got a pet parrot. With a hummingbird, if they don't get enough food in one day, they just do not survive. That's the end of them. I know, kitty, what you want. You are waiting for this because she knows there's broccoli here. You know, I never get broccoli. It seems like it all goes to her. So let's give her her broccoli because I turned on the camera. Okay, you know what? This is so beautiful. Oh, just a little. Can't I eat a little? I just want a little. Just a little. You gotta share. She's gonna run off. Yep, off she goes. And she's gonna go hide and make sure nobody else takes it from her. So with that, I am sorry if I bored you a little bit with the hummingbird setup, but I like to be able to come out here, enjoy this, take a look. This is something else I've worked on. The Orioles, they like to drink out of the pizza trays because they can stand on it. That's why I've talked about it. That's why I put pizza there. It's like, why are you playing around with pizza? Because they can actually land on here and drink in between and they won't get all sticky. And that's what they use the fountains for because collecting as they go around in your garden, the hillsides, wherever they're going, they get pollen on them. They all do. And they want to wash off and clean. They're very clean creatures, birds. So with that, I give them the fountains and everybody's happy. And like I said, I have learned so much this month. Who would have known, like I said, a stick can prevent hornworms? See, when you touch, see the fur? It, this is kind of furry, the tomato plants. I got to do a whole video on this because I'm just so amazed over this. It's sticky. It gets on your hands. And after you handle the tomato plants without any gloves, all you want to really do is clean up. Well, I found out the Orioles don't really like going through tomato plants. So though they want the hornworms really bad, which you do not want, and they want them as small as possible, but they will take them up to a certain size. Because the big ones, they're just, I don't even think they can handle those. But they don't want to climb around the tomato plant if they don't have to. So they use stakes. And it is amazing that if you give them some sticks, how it makes it so much easier for them to get in there and look around just absolutely flabbergasted over that because something as simple as this I didn't even think of so like I said sit down observe nature have a cup of coffee have a glass of mint tea have a glass of water the main thing is enjoy your garden be it small or big it doesn't matter it can be one chair one chair is a beautiful garden and just enjoy your garden and enjoy nature and with that have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Even if your little dog has to watch you and with agony watch you take a bite out of her broccoli. Bye-bye, everybody. Did you finish your broccoli? I don't have any more. You ate the head off of it yesterday and now you ate it again. And you don't even want me to take any? I don't have any. Look, I don't have any more. Oh, you look like you've had a bad hair day, but you've been running through the bushes. I don't have any. My hand is empty. There's nothing there, I promise. Molly, did you find the lizard? No, but I'm determined. You do know that lizard is so much faster than you. Plus, you can get into places you can't. Caleb, we're going in the house. She wants more broccoli. And this one is determined to find the lizard. Molly, it's too warm for you. We're going in the house. Please. Let's go. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? You want to go in the house? Let's go in the house. Okay.